morning. A few of you have jumped on early. Morning, Trudy. Oh, I've got my shells. Oh, you can hear the birds, can you? It's, that, that's the thing, isn't it? You can hear the wildlife nowadays, seeing as there's not so many people out and about. There's a lot of birds around here. In Milton Keynes. Hi, Heather. Morning, Judy. Morning, Teresa. So, um, as you can see, we're going to be looking at Under the Sea. Um, we've also got, uh, on tomorrow's show, the Wings Collection from Trudy. Um, you're not late, Pat. It's like a minute. <laughs> Did I just get an angry face? Why did I get an angry face? <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, yeah, sunshine. Yeah, what's that? It's too hot in the afternoon, so I'm glad I do the Facebook Lives in the morning. It's just like, I've just turned my fan off, actually. Yeah, so we're also having, uh, on the shows tomorrow, we're having the Under the Sea collection. We're having the Wings collection. We're having Phil's Sentiment Coins. We're also having um, Phil's Sentiments. You know, those ones that you can't pronounce, the grungy Philistic and the Beautifulistic and the Boltastic and the other one, which I cannot remember. Hello, Mr. M. Just talking about you. I'm sorry, I've got a mint in my mouth as well. Um, so you can see I've been cutting out. I thought we'd focus on the under the sea um, because you can uh, create lots of great scenes with them. And there's, there's just so much you can do. When I got the collection originally, um, I took a piece of Bockingford card, an A4 piece, and I just stamped loads and loads of things. And you can see I've still got some that I haven't cut out here yet. Uh, I've just been doing loads of cutting here because it's a good idea to do that. Um, these have been stamped with Versafine Claire, the Nocturne one. And um, it's a, with with that, you've got to be very careful because it's got such a long open time. And if you cut it out too quickly, as you're handling it, you'll actually smudge your image. So these are brilliant because these have been uh, since we launched the collection on the end of February at the on the weekend wow that Phil and I did. Um, so these are well and truly dry now so I would suggest that you have a really good stamping session with these and you can also don't forget you can also build scenes with the wings collection as well and I will be doing that on the shows tomorrow a little bit um, I'm not quite so good as Trudy at building the scenes with the wings collection just yet but you don't need to with the wings collection because for example let's just grab one with the hummingbird the main image in the hummingbird uh, you've got the hummingbird and that the hibiscus there actually as one stamp. So there's your scene straight away. Obviously, you can do other different things with it, but, you know, the work's done for you straight away with that. With the under the sea, would have been a good idea if I got those out, really, wouldn't it? So many stamps on this show, Philip. Loads of stamps on this show. I've got my fingers got there. So the under the sea are smaller. But on the under the sea, Trudy's got scenes or, or seascapes all ready for you. So we've got one on the dolphins and we've also got one on the seahorse as well, going the other way. So one's portrait and one's landscape. But that does also mean that you can use them together. It's very, very easy to create a scene. So without further ado, we will do something like that. Let's just grab a little bag and put all my bits in. So I don't lose them. So a cutting out session. I do like to actually cut uh, cut them out first before I colour them in. Um, just so I can plan my scene with my cutouts. And then decide what I want to colour in. So I'm not colouring in unnecessarily. See I've got, uh, I've got a Poseidon here. I didn't use him last time. He's beautiful isn't he? I've got a part coloured in mermaid. I'll have to finish her for tomorrow. And here's the start of a scene. So we will go back to basics and grab a piece of card. 
So this is blocking for the card. And we'll grab my big stamp perfect. Still eating my mint, sorry. I find I'm eating a lot of mints nowadays. I haven't got smelly breath or anything, I just like sweeties. Very sweet tooth. Okay, so just pop that in there. And I'm gonna actually create, I think, a picture. So I've already got a frame cut with the double debossed rounded squares. So that's what I'm going to aim at. So we take the smaller of the scenes, or smaller of the, the seascapes. This is the one that's on the seahorse. And we can pop him down. I'm going to give myself a reasonable amount of space. So I've got glitter on there. I've got glitter everywhere. And um, let's see. Do I want to put anything else on there at the moment? I don't know if I do actually. Um, let's grab some um, little fishies actually. So we've got the little shoals of fish here. So let's grab some of those. Think about how big it's going to be. Yeah, they'll be in. And we've got some smaller ones here. They're going to be in the distance. I think we'll just do the two. Pick those up. And we'll go for... Now, I'm, I'm expecting quite a lot of deliveries and a pickup today. So if I disappear, it's because I've had to go and answer the door. Right, so we're at Nocturne versus Fine Clear. This is the black one. Obviously, the beauty of using the stamp press is if we don't stamp brilliantly, we can go again and also make quite a mess. The silhouettes are the hardest ones to stamp just because they're a solid stamp. Let's clean up a little bit. Try not to get the problem with this big one is I keep on hitting the camera with it. In place. Da, 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 da. Okay, so look. Yeah, there's a little bit of the silhouette that I've missed. It could be a bit of glitter on the stamp, who knows? Let's just stamp that bit again. I think it might be a bit of glitter. So it might not improve it. Oh, it has. Excellent. Right, let's pull those out. Put that to one side. Right, so this is the start of my scene, okay? So if we actually stamp the, um, the scene from the dolphins as well, we could actually bring that in and step it up and then that's gonna give me a bit of depth because we're looking into the scene then if we take some of our pictures right, let's bring our frame in to see where we're getting okay so that's that would be coloured in and that would look like that so as soon as you put a frame around it it changes it, it makes it look like a picture I know we've not got any colour on there yet Oh, are you? Oh, we, yeah, you, you're very good at it, though, Trudy. So we could bring, also bring in our seahorse. He could sit there, but he's going to take over the whole scene, isn't he? We could bring in Poseidon. Again, he's going to take over the whole scene. And obviously, Madam here. She's just a diva, isn't she? She's just beautiful. So if we, we then could bring in... And this is why I like to have all these cut out. I mean, you can actually stamp them all flat and you can build yourself a scene, you know, just here, you know, because you're using your stamp, if you're using your stamp press, you can position all your individual um, fishes on here. In fact, you could stamp some fishes on, on there and actually then have some as dimension. So you're having a really depth of field. So we could bring in um, our, um, what's it called? Dolphin. 
we can have another one down there we can bring in our rye here we can bring in um i don't know we might have a he's a bit big that fishy we could have a fishy coming in down here down the bottom perhaps on our frame we could bring some shells in so we could have some shells going on the outside if you've not cut your um your piece big enough to go on the bottom we could bring in the shells and really fill it out let's see bring that down so you can see it properly so can you see where we're going we are actually creating a, a scene really really easily um just with that i mean you don't have to color them in if you want to you can sample emboss use some of the twinkling embossing powders that would look lovely so that's where we're going with that but we're not going to use this i've got another idea let's get we are we kind of are let's pull all these out of the way and put them to one side this is why i cut so many it's quite i quite find it quite relaxing because they are easy to cut out right so we could take this a step further it's also on the show i've asked phil to put some backgrounds on there and this is the distress page uh, where's my beauties and that's what the distress just bleh, distress page looks like so if i get it up the right way my splats are down the bottom so that's the right way up i don't know if you can read the text or not i don't know but I can't. So I'm taking the um, Warm Breeze first Vine Claire. This is a lovely colour. Lots of tapping. Don't have to be perfect. In fact, what I'm going to do is just grab another piece of Ockingford. I've just got one. Oh, I've got one there. Because what I have been doing is stamping it off because I want a second generation. I've been stamping it off onto just a piece of coffee paper, but I can't use that, that's wasted ink, isn't it? That's daft thing to do, absolutely daft. So if we actually stamp it off onto a piece of Bockingford, then we can use this for something else. Leone would be proud of me. Look at that, that's tremendous, isn't it? Now I'm just going to check that and make sure it's fairly even. All the ink that's left is fairly even because I did make a mess earlier and there's a little bit of an area that I didn't stamp. So I'm going to have to cover that up with a seahorse or something. Right, so let's see. Let's start. we we'll start kind of, let's think where we need to go. Thinking on my feet. About there. So we need to go to the top of the shoal. Don't worry about it being matching up because it doesn't need to. And that's nice and pale now. Okay? So we're going to repeat that till we've filled our image. We're going to get quite a few pieces of card that we can work with. Tap, 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 tap. Hi, Lozzie. Right, let's see. Let's have another one. Should if I'd have thought about it, I would have got four on here rather than three. But my brain isn't working at the moment. I'm not feeling as relaxed as I normally am. Panic mode at the moment. Right, let's see. And then kind of there, I think. Yeah. Oh, I've got a gap. Flip. <laughs> Right, another one. That's the thing with rubber stamps. You can't always see to line up. But it'd be alright. Because we'll put something, we'll put fish there to cover it up. Well, we won't because we're going to use another piece. But we, we, that's what we would do. We would use, put fish there to cover it up. Or a merman or some something. You can always, it, you can always pull things back. It's never kind of um, unusable. That's fantastic backgrounds. I didn't need to ink all that up actually, so we're going to pop 
in there. I need to just do one more just at the top. So this one I will actually just do on my spare piece of card, or paper rather. Look, I've got a splodge there from a fingerprint, but that's all right because it's distressed. See, that one's fine. The one at the bottom is fine. Typical. Absolutely typical. Right. So then, if we bring in our frame, and we bring in all our bits, remember our bits need to be coloured in. I mean, you can, because remember, this here is, is a little bit white. Now, we could colour that it in the same way, so put the distress, distress page on there as well, or not. It's entirely up to you, it doesn't really matter. And then, obviously, to cover that gap there, we could bring in um, maybe Poseidon. He can sit in there and cover that up, and then um, obviously carry on with that okay so so there's an idea of what how we can use that stamp and we could carry that on mat it and layer it put it onto some black card and, and another piece of the Bockingford and you'd be done that'd be that, that, that'd be pretty nice actually grab yourself um, a sentiment coin um, uh, in a circle die and your sentiment and you, you're done but I thought what we'd do is because we always make little, we always make big cards, don't we? Always make big cards. It's, I want to clean that up. Um, so to actually have something finished for you to look at, I thought I'd make a dinky little card. This is the the, the verse fine clear takes a little bit of um, cleaning off with a piece of paper underneath, and then you won't have the mess. Right. Okay. So let's grab this is what where we're going at. So when they're all coloured in, this is one that I prepared earlier. So it's a dinky little card, it doesn't measure very very big. It's um in fact it was just me testing something out. So it measured five and a half by four and an eighth. So basically it's just a fraction smaller than an A6 and I'm going to put it onto a piece of black card. Pop. Immediately pops. Before we put it on there though we're going to edge with some broken china oxide because broken china oxide tones in beautifully with the warm breeze versus fine clair. So this isn't framed, I've not used a die to cut it out. Probably Phil will tell me off because I haven't used the rounded corner rectangles, but it literally was me just playing and seeing what the distress page would look like with um, with the stamps and whether it would work. But obviously, in in working out whether it's going to work, I can actually make a completed card as well. So that, that's immediately finished that off and framed that and made it look beautiful. And I love the way that the um, broken china sits nicely on the sand at the bottom. Really pretty. Let's just get rid of this. Obviously pick up on rice paper if you've got rice paper handy. Or another piece of card. So let's pop that on there. It's my Phil's glue. Oh, I forgot to put my sentiment on. We'll put the sentiment on in a sec. Brain. Oh, I hope my brain's working tomorrow. It's the heat. Beautiful. I love that on it, it's only without anything else. So I've got some coloured in bits and pieces to put on, but we'll put a sentiment on first. Let's just figure out where we want to put the sentiment. So I've got one of my dolphins, which is obviously from the dolphin set. Um, I think those are from the mermaid set. Can't remember. We've got, is that a Gruber? Something like that. He's going down the bottom. We've got a couple of shells that are going to fit in here. 
and then we've got a couple of shells that are going to fit down there maybe like that and we're going to put a sentiment in there so let's grab a sentiment and I am going to use my stamp perfect just so I get it perfect and as I've already matted and layered it because I forgot what I was doing we want to make sure we get it right so let's figure out this is the beautifulistic sentiments and best wishes is a bit boring really isn't it uh, we could put just a happy birthday in there uh, yeah let's have one of those so he might come down a little bit further obviously you could put a coin in here but i felt that sentiment coins were a little bit big for this let's see if that's straight I think that's right. So um, that's why I didn't go for that. Is that on there straight? I think so. Oh, straight and me just don't fit at the moment. Again, with Nocturne, so all my stamping is in the same colour. Clean off that mess. Give it a good old press. A little bit of music outside now. Prefer the birds. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Pop that out of the way. Clean that in a minute. And let's just pop these on. Shall we dimension them or not? That's the question. No, I think I'll just stick them in place them a little bit of shape though which is not going to make any difference seeing as I'm gluing them let's put glue on the back of all of them or not let's look this is where I change change where I put them as I'm putting them and then realize that that's not what I wanted to do with them this is a Siamese fighting fish did you know you're not supposed to have two Siamese fighting fish in the same tank? You, they're meant to be um, in separate tanks, as in little tiny tanks that you put in your main tank. I used to have some of those years and years and years ago. Right. Then we pop our... I'm going for Gruber. I don't actually know. You probably know all the names of the fish, or you ought to. I'm saying this is a bottom feeder because he's on the bottom. Obviously, if you could cut, um, you could do loads of the same fish and make a shoal of them. I didn't use the little shoals of fish here. And I've just coloured in using the um, set to the um, uh, watercolour blending brush pens. That, is that going to... Oh, I'll put glue on there. Right, and then this one's going over here. So you can see, I mean, obviously I've coloured in ahead of time, so you don't watch me colour in. But you can see that you can make scenes really easily with these. There's a dinky little card. All finished. A dory, as in finding dory. <laughs> so it's really cute, isn't it? And let's lift that up because I, I, on, the, on the screen, the, that that's a little bit pale, but um, I think that's really pretty. Really cute, really cute. So so that 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 that's my little card that I wanted to show you. But I've also got here. Oh, where's my pile? What did I just drop? No, not that. I wanted to sh just remind you of the fact that within the the set you can actually do a bit of pattern building. So if you look onto um, Facebook Live, there's also one that's called um, in the video section. There's one that's called pattern building. Um, 
and it's also my YouTube channel, so I put it on there as well. So you've got the, the little tiny um, shell that I've used here. You can make a pattern with, with, with that, use some, some masking. You can also do some borders with them, uh, different borders. So I've shown how to do that. This is one of the fishes. So one of the fishes, you can make a pattern out of that too. Uh, and then in the wings collection, I've used the hummingbird, and that's a bit like totem poly, I think. Um, so you can do patterns there. And just to, quickly before we sign off, I just these are the only samples I've actually got with me. These must have been demos when we actually launched um, the wings collection, uh, which was twenty uh, fourth of January. Um, uh, so um, we've got a bit of pattern building with the frog going on here. Um, and then the background is from the dragon. These are from the dragonfly set. Uh, this is the hummingbird. Just using that main image that I showed you at the beginning of, of this live, and just colouring it in, and using the um, one of the hibiscus in the background there. Um, the bees collection is always really popular. This is just the main image on there, and I will be showing how you can expand that a little bit during the shows tomorrow. Just using the little um, thistle there and a couple of bees on a mopped up background. Uh, we've got one of the fairies here, and a little bit of masking and using the moon there. And watch out as well, because we've got the doodle borders too on the show as well. And here's the other fairy, and you can see the doodle borders in the background there, um, a little bit more uh, striking in colour. So uh, that's a sneak peek, really, uh, what there is on the shows tomorrow. Um, obviously, lots of potential for, for, for lots of flexibility. Uh, if, so if you missed out on those stamps, you'll be able to get them on her Chanda. You can also buy them from Phil's Honeypot Crafts website and you can also buy them on my website juliawattscrafts.co.uk uh, thank you very much ladies and if there's any gentlemen for joining me today um, my shows tomorrow are at 11am and 3pm um, Phil will be doing a Facebook live on Friday on his page and I, my next shows after today on Achanda are on Monday with Indigo Blue ridiculously early at 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. but I'll be doing a Facebook live on Sunday at 11 with those stamps so have a good day everybody enjoy the sunshine and thank you for joining me bye